Nudge. Architecture of choice. How to improve our decisions about health, wealth and happiness, by Richard Thaler, Cass Sunstein, Socialism or Free Market. What is there to discuss, nudge. Architecture of choice. How to improve our decisions about health, wealth and happiness, is a rethinking of the role of the state in the life of society in general and each person in particular. The authors try to avoid the concept of socialism and note that they are for free choice, that is, a market economy. Therefore, they call the proposed algorithm for adjusting the architecture of choice, and public policy, libertarian paternalism, as if emphasizing that some decisions are made for us, paternalism. But in general without imposition, the freedom of choice remains ours. After all, any state institution unwittingly engages in the architecture of choice and is not completely neutral. The personification of this is the word nudge in the name, which means to easily nudge, to suggest, to encourage. An example of choice architecture at work, the order of dishes in a school cafeteria directly affects what children put on their plate. One sequence encourages them to eat healthier, the other, on the contrary, allows them to fill their bellies with sweets and fats without worry. Within the framework of libertarian paternalism, there is a search for cases where the design of a choice influences a person's behavior and pushes him to actions that actually correspond to his own interests. Why is this topic so relevant? Let us recall that Richard Thaler received the Nobel Prize, and in the UK and the USA, after the publication of the book, Centers One were created within the governments to analyze public policy and propose improving its quality according to the ideas of libertarian paternalism. Attention to the architecture of choice, that is, the fine-tuning of seemingly secondary issues, is due to the fact that other tools for improving the quality of public administration and, consequently, economic growth have largely been exhausted in developed countries. Optimizing the choice architecture reduces transaction costs for economic actors and pushes them toward optimal behavior, both in terms of their own interests and those of society. By the way, companies resort to many of the techniques of libertarian paternalism when they manipulate our behavior in stores, etc. Of course, when discussing the architecture of choice, the topic of excessive paternalism that was in the socialist system comes up. After all, we are accustomed to perceiving economic policy in terms of two poles, socialism and the free market. But it seems that such a coordinate system does not help improve the quality of public administration in the 21st century. The view of economics and economic policy proposed in the book is relevant not only to behavioral but also to institutional economics. The latter is emphasized by the tandem of authors, Richard Thaler is an economist, and Cass Sunstein is a lawyer. It was from jurisprudence that in the first half of the 20th century the specialists who laid the foundations of the institutional approach moved to economics. They understood well how much the rules imposed by legislation influenced the behavior of economic entities, how does a person differ from homo economicus, the main argument in favor of libertarian paternalism, that is, a conscious adjustment of the architecture of choice is that an ordinary person differs significantly from the rational homo economicus described in economic literature and always making the most optimal choice. All behavioral economics is based on this discovery. Behavioral economics assumes that humans have two systems of thinking, first, fast, reactive, associative, based on habits, second, slow, conscious, analytical, takes into account the rules. In everyday life, we make many decisions using the first, reactive system. This saves time, but also results in us being biased, biased, and making mistakes. Based on the first system of thinking, we incorrectly assess dangers and risks, overestimate the likelihood of such rare but high-profile events as terrorist attacks, and underestimate such ordinary things as problems with the cardiovascular system. We are overly optimistic, ask any driver how much better he is than the average, and you will understand that every first one is a super racer. We don't like losing to such an extent that it prevents us from realistically assessing the situation and acting. We're also lazy and prefer to maintain the status quo, for example. We can pay monthly for Netflix even though we can't remember the last time we watched House of Cards, dot, another feature of a real person, 
it is difficult to resist temptation. This applies to everything from dieting to saving money for a rainy day. After all, System 2 plans to follow the diet, and System 1 cannot pass up every first dessert. That's why we sometimes come up with cunning tricks. One of them is mental accounting, as this phenomenon is called by economists who study behavioral economics. As part of mental accounting, we put money into conventional envelopes, for transport, for a mortgage, for food, for a movie, and consider them as non-fungible. If in the first week all the money was spent on the cinema, then in the remaining three we will not go to the cinema with the money that is for the mortgage, humans are very social creatures, smiles are contagious, we care what our neighbor thinks, we easily agree to do what the majority is doing, etc. If we told someone about our intention to do something, the likelihood is that we let's do it, it goes up. And it is precisely this feature that the authors propose to use when developing an architecture for choice and influence on the social behavior of the population. In what situations is a well-thought-out choice architecture an easy nudge of a person to the optimal solution necessary? When it comes to solutions, which we take rarely, several times in our lives, but they have serious consequences, when feedback from the decision is not immediate, when it is difficult to understand the issue and understand what suits our interests, this group includes purchasing real estate, saving money for old age, and consuming alcohol, cigarettes, etc. There are several factors to keep in mind when creating a selection architecture, motives of behavior. This includes answering the questions, who uses the product slash service? Who chooses? Who pays? Who makes the profit? When a doctor prescribes a medicine, the insurance company pays for his services, and the patient takes the medicine, there is a conflict of interest and the optimal choice is not always possible, the need for a diagram map, or any other visual infographic way of presenting information. To ensure that you make the best choice, you need a clear map of what you're choosing from and how the different options relate to each other. It is difficult to compare similar financial services of banks, but if you attach a simple and understandable table to them, the likelihood of error is reduced, default option. Most users do not make any choice, but use the default option. Therefore, it should meet the interests of users as much as possible, the need for feedback. Waiting for user error. The choice architecture must be tolerant of user error and designed with it in mind, the need for a complex choice structure to make it easier to understand and make the right decision. Difficult choices need to have a structure to make it e Money, saving for old age is quite difficult, it always seems that you can start doing it tomorrow. Especially in countries with voluntary social contributions, in the US, many people are not interested in this issue and do not sign up for even the most profitable 401k pension plan. Changing this situation is quite simple, the employer can more actively invite employees, for example, when hiring, to sign this pension agreement and provide financial literacy training. For Russia, this issue does not yet seem so relevant, but the widespread ignorance of the instruments of non-compulsory pension insurance is also largely explained by the forgetfulness and inconvenience of registering it. Even if a person has started saving money and investing capital, he often does the latter very naively and suboptimally. It's difficult to choose between stocks and bonds, split your existing capital into 70 and 30 percent, respectively, or choose a different proportion. How to choose between products that contain a mix of different stocks and or bonds. It is difficult to make a decision, since a person cannot see a trend for several decades behind the daily fluctuations in the value of securities. As a result, he refuses highly fluctuating papers in favor of, as it seems to him, more reliable ones, and this is not always the case. Often the herd instinct kicks in, they invest in what is trending, for example. They invested especially actively in technology companies before the dot-com crisis of 2001. The instinct to diversify is also strong, because of it, people tend to use all available opportunities, if you can invest in two funds, then most will invest 50-50, but this is also not always the optimal solution. Another mistake is to invest too much in the shares of the company you work for, if it goes bankrupt, you can lose both your job and your savings. Therefore, when it comes to investing and saving for a rainy day, 
The architecture of choice is very important, the financial instruments offered must be clear, for example, how much will be saved by 2030, 2040, or 2050, default options designed, and complex decisions structured, decisions for those who does not want to understand the issue at all, solutions for those who want to think a little, and for those who want to make all decisions on their own. Credit is also an area where there is a lack of smart choice architecture. Research shows that in the United States, mortgage loans for less educated segments of the population, all other things being equal, were more expensive, since it is the less educated people who are easily misled and find it difficult to sort through the piles of papers and compare lending conditions from different banks. A similar situation is observed in the case of student loans for education, the authors propose not only to make it easier to select and compare offers, but also to simplify the process of obtaining government assistance for the poor and encourage parents to start saving for their children's education in advance. The authors propose to revise the architecture for credit cards, because it is rare that a user understands how much bank services cost him. In 2000, Sweden reformed its pension system, the population was asked to choose in which financial instruments they wanted to invest part of their contributions. Richard Thaler and Cass Sunstein believe that the architecture of this project was suboptimal from the citizens' point of view. They were asked to choose from 500 funds, and some of the advertisements could be misleading, advertising for financial instruments generally does not tell the whole story. In addition, at the time the program was launched, technology companies were at their peak, in whose shares many chose to invest, and as a result lost money. Also, a disproportionate amount of money was invested in Swedish companies. An analysis of the first years showed that those who chose the default option, and this was a third of citizens, were right, the basket formed by experts turned out to be more profitable than all other funds on average. It would be better if citizens were not actively pushed to make a completely independent choice, and also if there were more, several, peer-reviewed options from which to choose, rather than 500 funds, dot, health, working on medical choice architecture can help save citizens health and money. Thaler and Sunstein give several examples, Medicare Part D, organ donation, and the environment. Medicare Part D drug insurance was introduced in 2006 as an integral and voluntary part of Medicare, Medicare is health insurance for citizens over 65 years of age in the United States. Anyone with basic Medicare could choose from dozens of drug plans. According to the researchers, with the right choice, savings could be up to $700 per year. For all but the most needy, participation was voluntary, and those in need, if they did not choose on their own, were automatically randomly assigned to one of the plans. Thaler and Sunstein criticized the model because it was difficult to choose, elderly people take many medications, and finding the optimal plan was not a trivial task, about 10% of those who could have enrolled did not enroll at all, even though they would have benefited from it. Participants they didn't get any feedback at the end of the year, meaning they didn't know how much the program ultimately saved them, and they didn't have a way to compare it to other plans, maybe they should have changed plans, dot, organ donation countries are divided into those where a person's consent is required for the use of his organs after death, and those where, on the contrary, by default all donors are required and an expression of desire is required in order not to be a donor. The United States falls into the first category, and although many people support organ donation, only a small proportion declare it on paper, resulting in a shortage of donor organs. Thaler and Sunstein propose simplifying the consent procedure, for example, when obtaining a driver's license, the requirement to check yes or no next to the donation box should be mandatory, when it comes to protecting the environment, that is, reducing emissions and energy consumption, Thaler and Sunstein propose several courses of action. They advocate trading in certificates for firms, emission volumes can be purchased. But at the same time, they propose influencing behavior using feedback, for example, Indicating the amount of consumption and money spent on heating regulators, or more actively informing the population and campaigning for unpopular but effective measures, such as increasing taxes on gasoline, liberty, a good education is the key to freedom in modern society, in choosing a profession, place of residence, etc. Therefore, in many countries there is a desire to ensure equal access to education. 
The United States is no exception, but the algorithms for assigning children to public schools in the United States are suboptimal. Children from low-income families in the United States are more likely to end up in schools that are not the best, usually the reason is simple, their parents cannot understand which of the available schools is better because the information is presented in an unclear manner. Also, even having the opportunity to change schools, parents more often succumb to the administration's persuasion not to do this, a complex bureaucracy also contributes to maintaining the status quo. Children from low-income families refuse to go to college, again due to a lack of understanding of how significant the difference in future salaries can be, and because of the inability to apply for government support. Take out a loan for education, etc. All these problems can be solved with the help of the right architecture to choose. Research shows that if low-income parents and children received all the necessary information in an understandable form, then a significant proportion both changed schools to better ones and entered college, Thaler and Sunstein are confident that Americans, by purchasing health insurance or simply paying for medical services, are also buying the right to sue doctors for negligence and mistakes. This right costs them a lot. Moreover, for the majority, this is, in fact, buying a very expensive lottery ticket, because only a small part of patients sue for negligence and medical errors and win, the majority do not do this. They are satisfied with the doctor's apology, studies show this. With this in mind, some states are already taking steps to limit lawsuits, California has limited the amount that can be awarded for moral damages in medical malpractice cases. That's why Thaler and Sunstein propose allowing people to buy insurance and health care with or without the right to sue. This will make health care services more accessible to low-income people. Another area that needs reform is the institution of marriage, or more precisely, that part of it that is concluded before the state. The authors propose to leave the right to enter into marriages to churches and other non-governmental organizations on conditions that correspond to their ideas about the life and mutual obligations of those who enter into marriage. The state must take care of protecting the most vulnerable, children and women, in the event of divorce, the behavior of both parties to the marriage should be thought out in advance. The authors propose to intervene in the architecture of choice during divorce. With a divorce rate of 50%, standard cases of division of property and obligations can be prescribed. This will simplify the divorce process. This procedure for concluding marriages will equalize all forms of cohabitation, while now tax and other benefits are available only to people who have entered into a traditional marriage and entered into it officially. 10 Best Ideas 1. State institutions are not neutral, they set the architecture of choice. Therefore, it is important to understand what the choice of an ordinary person will be, taking into account his distorted worldview, he is not homo economicus. Dot, two. The state can set conditions for companies, banks, mobile operators, etc., to reduce the likelihood of concluding contracts that are unfavorable for citizens due to the fact that they were unable to understand the bureaucratic intricacies. 3. Attention to choice architecture will improve the well-being of low-income communities. 4. When developing a choice architecture, special attention should be paid to the default option, since it is the one that is often chosen, the average person is lazy, careless and tends to put off important decisions until tomorrow. Dot. 5. When creating a choice architecture, you need to remember the motives of the subject's behavior, who uses the product slash service. Who chooses? Who pays? Who makes a profit? Dot, 6. In order for people to make the right choice, they need a map for orientation, options, how they differ, etc. Dot, 7. The created architecture must contain feedback, so people will be able to adjust their actions, understanding what depended on what. 8. The choice architecture must be designed with the understanding that users will make mistakes. 9. Complex choices should be structured to make it easier to understand and make the right decision. 10. Choice architecture is especially important when it comes to decisions that are made infrequently, education, marriage, real estate, and when feedback is difficult or time-consuming. 